Have you heard people talk about audio interfaces and mixers, but you're not quite sure what they are and how they might help you with your audio game? Well, you're in luck, because in this video we will be discussing what audio interfaces and mixers are, their similarities and differences, and which one you'd want to use in which situation. So if you're just starting out or looking to level up your audio game, then this video will help decide what's right for you. So let's get started. Put simply, an audio interface is a device that helps you connect your microphones, instruments, and other audio gear to your computer for recording. It has two main components that help you do this. The first one is the analog to digital and digital to analog converter. This is what allows the interface to convert analog audio signals, like those from your microphone while you're podcasting, or from your guitar when you're recording your latest killer guitar solo into a digital signal that your computer can understand. And also what allows it to convert the digital signal back to an analog signal that you can hear in your headphones or speakers so that you can decide that you didn't quite nail those pinch harmonics in your solo after all. Secondly, we have the preamps. The signals from microphones and instruments, which are called mic level and instrument level respectively, are quite low in voltage and have to be amplified to what is called line level before they go through the A to D converter. So when you plug in your cable to the mic or instrument input on an audio interface, it's actually going through a preamp before it finds its way onto your computer as a digital signal. Now that we know what's on the inside of an audio interface, let's have a look at what's on the outside of one so that we can start to figure out in which situations we'd want to use one. This is a Focusrite 2i2, a very popular entry-level audio interface. As you can see, it has XLR connectors for plugging in microphones and quarter-inch jacks for plugging in instruments like guitars or basses combined into a single port and a switch to switch between them depending on what you've plugged in. It also has a couple of line-level inputs that bypass the preamps, and these could be used to connect sources such as synths, drum machines, and any other equipment that has line-level outputs, and get them as separate tracks into your computer. Each input also has a separate gain control for the preamp, so that you can set the levels of the tracks independently. It's worth noting that this means that each track will be recorded separately into your computer, so this particular interface will be perfect for recording a podcast with two people, for instance, or a piece of music with a guitar and a vocal, because you could edit and process the two tracks separately after recording. This may not be the case with mixers, as I'll explain later. In a home studio setting, the outputs will typically be used to connect to a pair of active speakers, but if you have more than two, you could, for instance, use them to create a separate headphone mix if you're a DJ, or if you have other outboard gear, you could loop them in by using one output for sending the audio and one input for receiving the processed audio back again. There are also many other types of analog and digital outputs that you can find on more high-end gear to connect lots of devices together, but that's outside the scope of this video. The connection to the computer is done via USB in this particular case. There are also Firewire, Thunderbolt, and PCIe interfaces that each have their own pros and cons, but USB is going to be more than enough if you're just starting out. While even the most basic audio interfaces will have these two components and do the job to a decent degree, you can also get dedicated preamps and converters that focus on a single job and tend to be better at it. Though this certainly comes at a premium, and is overkill for people who are just starting out. We cover several of these topics in much more detail and with pretty animations in our audio interfaces series, so go check those videos out after this if you want to learn more. Now, before we look at mixers, I would love it if you could take a second to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're finding this video valuable. All right, let's continue. So, your typical mixer has a number of input channels, each with its own mic and line connections, and a preamp, just like with an audio interface. It often also has some sort of basic EQ, even for the entry-level models, and provides a number of lineouts. Again, similar to the audio interface. So how does it actually differ? Well, the primary use of a mixer is to combine various audio sources and optionally send them to multiple outputs, but usually as stereo mixes, and not as individual tracks like with an audio interface. And so they don't often come with A to D converters. This means that to record your stereo mix onto your computer, you would still have to plug the outputs of your mixer into an audio interface. There are now USB mixers, and even some very cheap ones have converters built in. But these still usually only allow you to record a stereo output, and the ones that allow you to record multi-tracks tend to be a lot more expensive. For example, this is a Behringer Zenix 302 USB, an entry-level USB mixer which has an XLR jack combo input and a few line inputs. It has some very basic controls on each input for EQ, called low and high, and also a pan control. 
And as you'd expect, it has a USB port to connect to the computer and therefore has an audio interface inside, as we talked about earlier. So any combination of inputs can be recorded directly to the computer, but as a single stereo track. And here's a significantly more upmarket USB mixer, the Soundcraft Signature 22 MTK. As well as obviously having more inputs, it has a much more granular EQ per channel, built-in effects per channel, and the main draw, high quality recording of up to 22 individual tracks straight into the computer. So a USB mixer could be very useful in a home studio setting if you want to capture the live studio performance of a band and don't mind having a stereo recording of it. Or maybe you predominantly rehearse and play live with the band and occasionally want to record something, in which case it might be a versatile piece of kit to have in your arsenal. Or maybe you're a drummer, so you need lots and lots of inputs to record yourself playing because you're high maintenance. Mixers with more inputs tend to be cheaper than audio interfaces with the same number of inputs. So if inputs are a limiting factor to you, a mixer could be a better investment. Okay, so if you're looking to record a few high quality tracks at home onto your computer, then a simple audio interface will take you a long way. If you find yourself needing more inputs, ask yourself whether recording in stereo is enough, or if you predominantly focus on live performances, in which case a mixer and a USB mixer in particular could be a really good investment to get the best of both worlds. Just bear in mind that not all USB mixers can be used as a regular analog mixer. So if you go down this route and being able to use the mixer in a standalone fashion is important to you, then make sure you get one that can function in this way. If you wanna learn more about all the features of an audio interface, then you should definitely check out this video that we made that goes into more detail about them. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments and we'd love to help. And hopefully see you next time here on Mixed Signals. Bye-bye.